takes guts to throw your body in front of an opponent advancing towards you at force. We've always known our rugby players are brave, but a recent study conducted by Chalkusk and UCC has proven that, medically speaking, the Irish rugby team also have exceptional guts. I'm here at the Chagas Food Research Centre in Moore Park to find out how my gut compares and to investigate the secrets behind good gut health. The human gut is about 9 metres in length and contains an extraordinary 2 kilos of bacteria. We have long heard about the fact that there are good bacteria like bifidobacteria and bad bacteria like salmonella. And we know that poor gut health can make us more susceptible to allergies, obesity and diseases like ulcerative colitis. Ultimately though, good gut health is where there is a wide range of different bacteria and this is Paul Cotter's area of expertise. The big buzzword in the field recently is diversity. Having a high diversity means that it's more resilient and can cope with stress a little bit better. Think about, the, say, the Amazon rainforest that has lots of trees and different plants and insects and different animals there. And so that's a high diversity type environment. And you compare that with a field that has just one crop in there. In the field that has only one crop, if one insect comes in and it kind of has the potential to destroy that, if one insect comes into the Amazon rainforest, it's just going to be one of millions of different things there. How do you go about analysing the microbiota? The microbes that are present in our gut, they're not easy to grow in the lab. Only a small proportion of them can grow. So we collect a faecal sample or what's called a stool sample from these individuals and then we extract all of the DNA from that sample and we sequence it using what's called a high throughput DNA sequencer. So this is really cutting edge sequencing technology and this tells us what microbes are there and what they're capable of doing. In the interest of scientific study, I submitted my own sample to Paul's lab for analysis. So Paul, you kind of know me a little bit better than most because you've been actually looking at my guts and my microbiota. Yeah. What did you find? Uh, Katrina, we found, found some really interesting results. You actually have quite a high diverse microbiota in your gut. Yes. Yeah. You're not quite up to the rugby players, but you're not too far off. You're, really? you're, yeah. You will have a population, a high population of acromantia, and, and that's good too because they're a, a microbial population that's associated with a lean phenotype and less inclined to become obese. Acromantia. Acromantia. Yes. Lots of acromantia inside me that yeah. I never knew about. There you go. That's amazing. Yeah. We also found a good population of Barnsiella, and that makes <laughs> you. There you go, and that makes you less susceptible to having to picking up hospital acquired infections. And then finally, you have large amounts of blautia, and that's typically associated with people that consume a large amount of whole grains. So blautia, acromantia... And barnsiella. Barnsiella, yes. all living inside me. There you go, as well Working as... Working away, doing their thing. When you looked at the Irish rugby team's gut health, the results were pretty surprising. We were really blown away by the, just how diverse their microbiota was. We had collected lots of different data and blood samples and questioned them and so on, but the, the key things that seemed to particularly correlate with increased diversity were one, exercise, and two, their diet, but in particular the amount of protein and whey protein that they were taking in. So they were the, the key things that we thought might be interesting and that's why we focused those on those in our follow-up study. Chalkusk is conducting a new trial to examine if low levels of whey protein supplement and moderate exercise can have a positive impact on the microbiota of the general public. Owen Cronin is a clinical research fellow in the Department of Medicine in University College Cork and is running the trial. As far as we know, it's the first of its kind where we're prospectively following people who are at a very kind of inactive baseline um, and we're supplementing their diet and bringing exercise in de novo to see what changes that brings about. Initially at their uh, baseline visits, we do a lot of measurements. We assess their diet, uh, their physical activity levels. We take uh, clinical measurements, weight, uh, waist, hip ratios. Uh, we assess their body composition with DEXA scanning. And we also assess their stool and microbiota distribution and diversity. First of all, we've designed our study uh, into three different groups. Uh, our first group are uh, 30 people who've uh, just exercised for eight weeks, a mixture of aerobic and resistance training. 
The second group is a group with 30 again who exercise combined with a protein supplement, that's whey protein. And the last group is a 16 week study period where for the first eight weeks they take protein alone and for the last eight weeks they take protein and exercise combined. The reason we've done this is trying to try to decipher which component brings about the effect, whether it be the protein supplementation or the exercise. Owen Myers is one of the trial participants in the third combined grouping. They showed me my BMI scale and showed that I was quite a bit overweight. Like you can see a scale, you can see like, you know, normal, you can see overweight and you can see obese. And <laughs> when you can see obese and it's not that far away, you're kind of like, there's no way it could be that like, but. And what was your body fat percentage, do you remember? Uh, it's about 33%. So, I mean, when you think of that, that's, that sounds insane. Like, you're like I'm a third fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. A third of me is fat. Like. And then you're thinking you're supposed to be 70% water, so like you're water and fat and nothing else. And what about... <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's room for anything else, you know? There, those sums don't even add up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and had you ever thought about gut health or microbiota before this? I didn't really think much about it. Obviously, you, you know, if you go on the sauce the night before, you're not going to be feeling a great day. You, you get bad foods, you're not going to feel great the next day. You feel great when you're eating it, but now when you're the next day, that's the, that's the extent of all I knew and all I thought about it really. Well, the results will be revealed in eight weeks time, so I can't wait to see yeah. what stage you're to it. in. I'm looking forward to it. That's it, yeah, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. <laughs> eight weeks later, and the team are very pleased with Owen's results. Along with increased microbial diversity, there have been specific changes such as the reduction in the levels of bacteria called Firmicutes and Prevotella, both of which have been shown to be associated with obesity. So the trial has materially improved the health of his gut and his overall health. But was it worth all the hassle? Yeah, actually, I do I feel better. I know it's a bit of a difference, right? like um, energy-wise anyway, especially like I lost over a kg of fat and I think I gained under two kgs of muscle. So like not a huge lot, but... Um, it's a bag of sugar is worth the it's fat. It's a bag of sugar is worth the fat, yeah. When you kind of put it in front of you, you'd be like, okay, that's, that's a bit, yeah. This is really cutting edge stuff. So all of the, the best labs and the best universities in the world are working in this area. In Cork, uh, we've already been studying this sort of topic for very many years now. So we were already in a leading position and we hope to maintain a position there in the future.